it's not just emergency teams in hospitals that are ready to help you. I know! There are medical crews all over the country on standby 24-7. We're on call with the West Midlands Ambulance Service, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. This is a rapid response car, and it's one of a fleet of vehicles that respond to up to 3,000 emergency calls every day. Time to find out what it's like to be first on the scene of a medical emergency. And a new case is just in. All the information we've got at the moment is that somebody has fainted. So that could be an infection, it could be heart, it could be brain, it could be loads of different things. We don't know their age, we don't know if they're a man or a woman, so we just have to get there quickly as possible, see if we can sort them out. Within minutes, we arrive at our destination. Hello, sir. Hello there. Do you remember what happened this morning? I just went dizzy. I don't remember anything else. 82-year-old Alan was walking home from the shops when two workmen saw him fall over in the street. But we were just uh, working here. What makes sense is just hit the floor. Okay. He's hit his head there. OK. So it's actually quite a cold morning, and he's lucky that these builders saw him fall down, because if he'd knocked his head and been unconscious for a long time, he could have got very cold, and you end up with many problems, a head injury, hypothermia, and whatever led to the fall in the first place. Any heart problems? Your heartbeat's going a little bit slower than it should be, so I'm going to do a quick heart tracing on you. So what Jan's doing now is taking a tracing of his heart, and the reason for that is we don't know why he's fallen, but if it's his heart that's made him fall, before we move him, we need to make sure he's OK. And then I'm going to give you a drug to speed your heart up, OK? Jan's found Alan's heart rate's very slow, and that's why he's collapsed. It's really good that Jan's been able to figure out the problem, and we know that he needs an ambulance and to get to hospital. While Jan administers a drug called atropine to speed up Alan's heart, the ambulance arrives. Alan's slow heart rate is a real concern, and Jan has to administer more medication on the way to the hospital. OK, sweet up. This drug's going in now. So Jan's giving Alan a third dose of atropine to try and get his heart rate up. It's really important that your heart keeps beating strong and it keeps beating quickly enough to get blood around your body and particularly to your brain. What's amazing about Jan is all the things she's done for Alan ECG, blood glucose, she's talking to him the whole time. She's doing while we're moving along at about 30 or 40 miles an hour. Fortunately, we arrive at the hospital quickly because Alan takes another turn for the worse as he's wheeled in. That's a bit hair raising. My biggest concern happened. His heart stopped um, for about a minute, but it's restarted again now and, and he's talking again. Alan actually got a lot more sick as we got to hospital. He's feeling much better now, but it's so good that he's here so quickly, and that's all thanks to Jan being on the scene quickly and a really, really good quick drive here. He's in the right place, and things are looking good for Alan. During a short stay in hospital, Alan had a pacemaker fitted, and he's now happily back at home. Ouch. Your body is amazing, but sometimes it needs fixing. All over the UK, there are special teams of professionals trained to tackle medical mysteries. The heart is the most important muscle in the body. Between beats, it relaxes and fills with blood, like I filled this tennis ball with water. And then when it contracts, it squeezes the blood out of it, forcing blood around your body. Now, just like squeezing the tennis ball, your heart pumping is hard work. And so, to do exercise without getting out of breath, your heart has to be really strong. But not everyone has a tip-top heart. Every year, around 4,600 babies are born with a heart defect. This is 14-year-old Luke. He's one of those who's had heart problems since birth. So, Luke, tell me about the issues you've had with your heart. Well, Chris, I had four things wrong with my heart, and one of those was a hole in my heart. When your heart is working normally, it's incredibly powerful. Blood flows through its four chambers and is then pumped to every part of your body. But when you have a hole in the heart, there's a little opening between two of the chambers. This means blood doesn't flow as well as it should, and so less oxygen gets pumped around the body. What was the effect it had on your life? I was lacking in energy. Whilst I grew up, my friends got faster and stronger. I was staying the same, possibly getting weaker. Two years ago, Luke had major heart surgery, which allowed him to do more exercise. Oh. 
made me fitter and stronger. So I've been able to get out there, do more things, and just enjoy myself. And now Luke is helping others by participating in research into how much exercise is safe for children with heart conditions. Dr Guido Pieles is running the research at Bristol University. Today, Luke is going to do some exercise under the close supervision of Dr Guido and his colleague Craig. This is the first time children's hearts have been monitored like this while they're exercising. Here we're looking right into Luke's heart and then we see Luke's heart muscle because after all, the heart is a muscle. Okay. And we can see this muscle contracting, relaxing at around 80 beats per minute. Luke also wears a mask so Dr Guido and his team can measure the amount of oxygen he uses. Feeling comfortable? Yep. Good. OK, so we've got a heart scanner, so we can take pictures of the heart. We've got the electrical trace of the heart, so we can look at the rhythm. And then we've got the oxygen mask on, so we can see how fit Luke is. Are you sweating yet? A little bit. <laughs> faint, faint drops of sweat. So your heart rate's now up at 115, so it's gone up quite a bit. Monitoring Luke's heart allows Dr Guido to see how well it's coping whilst exercising. There we've got Luke's heart again, and we can see that Luke's heart is contracting faster. Working much harder, but it's working well. As you can see, the ultrasound image on the left shows Luke's heart beating faster when he's exercising compared to the one on the right when he wasn't. And would you say he's safe to continue doing the kind of exercise he loves to do? Yes, because after all, exercise is good for our heart. It keeps us healthy and makes us live longer. If you have a heart condition, always check with your doctor before exercising. Although Dr Guido's research is only in its early stages, he's hoping to come up with some recommendations which will allow children with heart conditions to exercise safely like Luke. I'm in a top secret location, and it's so top secret, I'm not even allowed to mention its name, but in here is a special medical collection of human body parts, and I've been allowed exclusive access to show you some of the ways the human body can go wrong. These two things are human hearts. This one is a normal human heart. Now, it's been opened up so that you can see inside, but if you put it back together, it would be about the size of a large apple. That's what's inside me and you. But this heart is much bigger. Now, the man who this heart belonged to had a rare disease which made some of the tissues in his body weaker, so they stretched like his heart and his blood vessels. And that's why his heart's got so big. Imagine having this inside your chest. It's the size of a melon. You'd definitely notice it. This guy would have had a pounding heartbeat. Boom, boom, boom. You'd actually be able to see his chest wall moving with each massive beat. You'd probably have been able to see the blood washing up into his neck, so his neck would have been expanding and almost flapping with each heartbeat. And in the end, this man's heart getting so big and his blood vessels got so weak, that's what killed him. And now to our lab for some amazing body experiments. Ugh. Whoa. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Today, it's your body's ticker, the heart. Zond is having a little lie down. You could actually try this bit at home. It's quite nice. But what you can't try at home is hooking Zond up to an electrocardiogram, which is what I've done. It's basically a heart monitor. And each one of these spikes on the display is a separate beat of the heart. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. Even if you're just lazing around like Zond, your heart never stops beating. It beats even when you're asleep. As Zahn seems to be illustrating perfectly, you can see the spikes and his pulse is around 70. OK, Zahn, demonstration over. What? What? What demonstration? I've been awake the whole time. Now, your heart was beating when you were a six-week-old embryo inside your mum, just the size of a raisin. Your heart is made up of millions of tiny cells, and each one of those cells beats on its own. And here's one of them. This is a single heart cell. It just won't stop beating, even without its mates. Absolutely brilliant, isn't it, Zand? Zand? Zand! What? It's not nap time. Now, if you ask more of your body, say when you exercise... Exercise? Yes, Zand, exercise. Your heart will step up and help you out. Right, give me some nice big star jumps, please, Zand. 
When you exercise, your muscles need lots more blood and oxygen. To provide this, the heart speeds up. As you can see, Zahn's heart rate is much higher now than when he was lying down. Even at rest, it beats around 100,000 times a day. So, you've seen how your heart beats at different rates depending on what you're doing. But how does your heart actually work? How does it get all that blood where you need it, when you need it? Well, we're going to show you. Check this out. This is a real heart. It's from a pig, but don't let that put you off. It's very similar to a human heart, and it's a pump with no equal. Blood arrives in the heart all tired and out of oxygen. The heart pumps it straight to the lungs, where it collects new oxygen. Back at the heart, it's given a mega pump, which scoots it all around the body. And there's no chance of it going the wrong way, thanks to the heart's special valves. And if you add up all the blood each of these beats pushes around the body, it comes to 7,200 litres a day. That's enough to fill 93 bathtubs. We've only got one bathtub. And if you fill it with blood, where am I going to have my bath? You need a bath. Now, to show you how it manages to do that, we're going to cut our pig's heart open. Looking inside the heart is absolutely amazing. The muscle here is very thick. This makes the heart really strong, and that's how it's able to pump blood right around your body. But it couldn't do it without one important bit of the heart, the valves, and you can see them here. Their job is to make sure the blood goes in the right direction. To see how the heart does its incredible job, we've set up our real heart, using plastic tubes as blood vessels and green water to do the job of your blood. OK, Chris, lift your bucket up a little bit. First, the heart fills with blood. It does this every time it beats. Whoa, there you go. Look, oh, at look at that. It fill. Look at it fill. OK, and squeeze now. Zahn's hands are doing what the heart does by itself thousands of times a day. And the heart is clever because everything's going into that bucket and nothing's going back into Chris's bucket. The heart only pumps blood in one direction. And that's thanks to the valves, not to Harry Styles. But there's one question that still remains. How powerful is the heart and how far can it squirt blood? I filled the heart. Now, you hold that bit. I'm going to get the bucket. Give me that. Quick, quick, quick. Get the bucket. OK. See okay. if you can get it. About a foot? Yeah, about half a metre. Go. OK, go. Yay! It's not bad, but I think we can go further. Let's refill the heart. OK, quick, fill it up again. But Zahn's squeeze is not nearly as strong as a heartbeat. Just aim it all in the bucket. Ready? OK, three, two, one. <laughs> Zahn gets quite a lot beyond the bucket. He just didn't get any in the bucket. But I still think that's pretty impressive. About two and a half metres. Two and a half metres is pretty good, but a live heart actually beats powerfully enough to squirt blood more than 10 metres. 10 metres? That's more powerful than my best water pistol. Luckily, Zahn's not 10 metres away. 